Last March, an estimated one and a half million young people in more than 120 countries walked out of schools in the biggest day of global climate action ever. This youth-led uprising is happening with unprecedented momentum on a global scale. To vote. But that hasn't stopped them from taking to the streets to raise their voices in a collective call for meaningful action to ensure their futures. From Fridays for Future to Extinction Rebellion, climate activism is on the rise. These social movements have drawn both praise and criticism. As they press for urgent action on climate breakdown. My name is Claire Kambametu. I'm a psychologist. And given that climate change is at least in part rooted in human behavior, I'm fascinated by how our attitudes towards climate change affect our actions enough action being taken to help stop or slow down global warming and climate change. We're like the alarm clock for politics to wake them up and let them know they're not doing enough for the environment. From rebellious grown-ups to striking school kids, I want to understand what's behind these radical movements and find out if we should be concerned. Obviously, climate protests are nothing new. But recently, two very distinctive movements have emerged. Fridays for Future began humbly enough when Swedish teenager Greta Thunberg began a weekly school strike. The young Swede has inspired millions of schoolgoers across the world to take similar action. And Extinction Rebellion, which takes its inspiration from the civil rights movements of the 20th century. They encourage non-violent, direct action to highlight the growing climate emergency. These grassroots movements come in response to one of the most dangerous things to happen in all of human history, climate change. And despite decades of warnings and global agreements, greenhouse gas emissions continue to rise around the world. But these movements also illustrate that something else is going on. And that is a significant change in our emotional response to climate change. This shift in people's emotions is so seismic that in almost every major city around the world, more and more are motivated to take to the streets and protest on a scale never before seen. Our emotional responses to climate change are often ignored. However, recent research suggests that understanding our psychological response to climate change might help us to respond more effectively. To date, one of the greatest obstacles to tackling climate change has been widespread denial of the problem. At its heart, climate change denial is a conflict between facts and feelings. Many people deny climate change because the facts are simply too upsetting or confusing, especially when the facts conflict with personal values. So to discover how we got from climate change denial to mass street protests, I'm here in Dunleary to meet environmental journalist John Gibbons. When do you think we had enough evidence to start to do something about climate change? I'd say realistically probably it dates back to about 1988 to 1990. That was around about the time that the US Congress was first appraised of it and when the evidence was quite clear and un unambiguous. So we've really had 30 years clear time within which to turn, uh, if you like, our scientific knowledge into action. 
And how does climate change denial fit in with that? Initially, interestingly enough, some of the best scientists in the world work for oil companies and gas companies. So lots of work was done by organizations like Shell and Exxon Mobil. Their scientists were telling their own boards back in the, in the 1970s, look, this is happening and it's real and it's going to get really, really bad. So in the case of Exxon Mobil, they took on board what the scientists said and they redesigned their oil rigs to make them more protected against rising sea levels. But politically, rather than accept limits on their industry, what they did was they doubled down and financed organized climate denial. So what that meant is they flooded millions, and in some cases hundreds of millions, into what are called astroturf organizations, phony grassroots groups, uh, academic intellectual bodies, so-called think tanks, all these various groups pushing forward the message that really there's, you know, this whole thing about climate change and global warming has been overstated. And that message, unfortunately, then has been amplified through the media. And how does the media feed into that confusion around the science? The people, if you like, who, are, who, who see their function as spreading confusion and misinformation in relation to climate change, they are using and taking advantage of the conventions of media where the media have presented um, the so-called climate debate as if it were two sides arguing it out. This is where the deniers and their supporters are only engaged in a bad faith exercise where they win as they see it. If they spread enough confusion, enough doubt that the public would just shrug its shoulders and go, well, there seems to be a debate, nothing to worry about. We have tended to pick the side of the argument that we prefer. and. Right now, climate science is screaming at us, decarbonize our societies dramatically. So you could have argued maybe 20, 30 years ago that climate change was what we would call distant thunder. It was the sound of danger in the future. What it is now is a crisis that's right here in our time. We're seeing that on the streets. Um, however, what we're not seeing it yet is in the kind of wide-scale changes that science tells us we're going to be required to do in order to stave off the worst of this over the next two to three decades. We simply haven't seen that kind of response yet. It's easy to feel overwhelmed when we consider the climate crisis, so we try to deny it and put it out of our minds. And that plays well for the denial campaigns carried out by the vested interest groups who benefit financially from inaction. But, according to a recent survey on attitudes to climate change, there has been a major shift among the Irish public. The survey indicates 86% of Irish people believe the Earth is getting warmer due to human activity. Among young people, the figure rises to 91%. Dr. Lorna Gold is a lecturer in Applied Social Studies at Maynooth University. I caught up with her to ask what's behind people's changing psychological responses to climate change. I think what's different now is really that it's being led through the lens of intergenerational justice. It's the question of what do we want to leave to our children that's driving this new wave of action. And a real sense that the science has landed in people, is starting to land in people's minds as facts. That gives me hope, but at the same time, I know that the change we need is so huge and the time is so short that this is the last opportunity that we have to really turn things around. Do you think climate change is a children's rights issue? Absolutely. The right to have a livable environment has to be a basic human right um, because we don't have a planet B. There is no other place for all the other rights of children to be fulfilled. So it has to be the most uh, important human right for, for children today. How do you think climate change is already affecting kids across the world? Because they understand the science, they know that climate emissions are still rising and that unless we peak our emissions in the next two to two years, scientists say, and then dramatically reduce them, their futures are going to be hugely diminished. How could it come to a point where adults who are meant to care for them, who are meant to be role models, are, let's say, squandering 
the remaining emissions that we have and in a sense squandering the future for our children. So I think that is really at the heart of, of why this is kind of coming to the very, very top of the, the agenda for, for young people today. Until now, climate change is exactly the kind of threat our minds aren't well equipped to deal with. It has seemed distant, happening mostly in the future and to other people. The widespread tendency to think, I'll be okay, known as optimism bias, has made it easier until now to assume that climate change won't affect us. However, as more and more people around the world call for action, it's reasonable to assume that our collective response to climate breakdown is moving from denial to acceptance. But will this lead to the kind of actions that scientists say are necessary?